Hey guys, it's Robin here from Team Fox uh, filming today inside the pigeon hide, although that's not what today's program is all about. We're out on Fox Patrol. Plus, we find out if the point two two LR is a capable fox round. If you hang around until this time down below, you can see how I got on the other day whilst out shooting pigeons also. So without further ado, let's get on with today's episode. So we're going to start the foxing action by talking about missing. Well, look, everybody misses from time to time. Wounding, however, is a different story. I was fairly comfortable that that shot should have sent that fox tumbling to the deck. However, the shot went um, not exactly where I was placing it. It was picked up uh, a field or so away and finished off luckily. However, we had to go to the farm to check the zero on the rifle. I changed batch of ammunition. Uh, and made sure that the rifle was spot on. This is a, a sighting shot that I had. Um, it's now clearly uh, empty and safe as Rick goes in. Uh, we've done this routine many, many times before, but Rick goes in uh, and informs me where the shot was actually landing. 120 yards down range, it was actually going high and to the left a little bit. Once I was comfortable with the rifle's capabilities, we were back out, although this was uh, a couple of weeks ago when the UK uh, was having problems with wind uh, and it meant for some tricky conditions. I was not on wind. I struggled to keep that shot steady, but it was, uh, I suppose, well timed in the end. Now, we've had several sugar beet fields lifted in the area, uh, which has meant that foxes have been on the move and spotted by some of the harvesters. In the shadows of the power station, this fox here, whilst going to the toilet, uh, felt the wrath of the Tika T3 combo. And it certainly looks like the rifle is back on song. Still to come in today's video, don't forget I've been out pigeon shooting and as I take a immensely high jackdaw right in front of the gamekeeper also. The 2-2 LR then, can it be used as a foxing calibre round? Liam from the UK Foxing Facebook page provides us with the answer here at his workplace. Using his CZ455 and Ely sub combo, Liam had taken uh, a couple of days to gather intel on the foxes causing a nuisance at his workplace and filming through the PARD 007 managed to capture this on film. Talk about right tool for the job, that absolutely nailed it, not even flinching. Cracking result, well done Liam. Right, let's get back over to the 223. I'm out with the keeper and using the Icotec GC500 caller on mating call we managed to call in this randy dog fox although you can see using the PBIRL um, gives a much clearer picture this is on the medium power setting it just boosts the performance of the night sight quite considerably and you can actually spot and track things coming in from much further distances with the extra illumination anyway we managed to call this fox in and using the lip squeak managed to get it coming in that little bit closer into range to be able to take the shot Certainly not as difficult as the other windy shots, it was a little more shaded there, but nevertheless with the crosshair on the bib it went straight down. Back out with Rick now, and we take a second to enjoy this lovely passing roebuck. Good looking isn't he? Up. 
back over in front of the power station now and we'd seen yet another fox um, over near the cover. This is actually the second or third one we'd seen uh, pretty much in as many outings. So I'd spent quite some time stalking in close or getting close to it. The wind is directly in my face so it can't hear me and it certainly can't smell me. So I need to get closer to it though simply because um, it's so windy I can't get steady on the sticks. I'm even struggling to hold the binos here to get a, uh, an accurate distance. But I do manage to stalk into just under the 100 yard marker um, spend a second or two making sure I'm nice and steady and that the picture's not over illuminated because I don't want to light my face up and alert the fox to my attention. Stick the crosshairs on the bib and pull the trigger. Well, I'll tell you what, that was not an easy one. It is windy. I saw it from a long way off. As you cross this dike, I have to go round the side of this dike because it's pretty wide actually. But this is the cover, the old cover here. I saw this, this fox here from a long way off. And down it went. This third one tonight. Fix drills straight in the bib. Good looking fox. Yeah, heart shot. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful job. Rick will be happy. That was hard work, especially in this wind. Indeed, it was very rewarding. Now, it's time to head over for one more fox before we go pigeon shooting. This fox here, once again, is on one of Rick's drives. Now, I've been on an all-night uh, ratting session here, so you can see it's just 6 o'clock in the morning. But I thought to myself, I'll go and quickly check over on the local shoot before I head home so I don't get a bollocking from the missus. Called this fox in, lip squeaked it across the field, although I couldn't quite see it because of this tall grass so I could see it perfectly fine through the thermal but using the night sight I couldn't see it and luckily the fox turned just as I pulled the trigger but the uh, crosshairs were still on the shoulder as it pinned it uh, straight through the engine room and as it lay there uh, again just over the 90 yard mark. Well that was difficult. The fox came from over this way behind all this grass so I was getting loads of IR. Couldn't shoot to the right because there's a building perfectly safe all behind it, but I can bloody see it. So I'm going to traipse through all this now. All this crap. I'll pick it up. I reckon that's a vixen. So I think. I don't know. It looked to be pretty much 100 ish yards. So. We will see. What have we got? Yep. Fixing. Don't worry, I've got plenty more foxing action coming up for you soon, along with this pigeon shooting video I've also had a 101 pigeon shooting day so far so I'll be able to ping a video together for that one as well. Hey guys Robin here from Team Foxer welcome back to the channel well today if you're watching this video anyway I've come out for a spot of pigeon shooting um, we've got some freshly drilled fields here um, they're going to be drilling this field here um, within the next day or two I believe so the farmer has asked us to come out and see if we can thin out a couple of the greys so there's quite a few in the area but today there is not much cloud cover it's not very windy and there's a bright sun as you can see because it's beaming right in my face uh, but I don't know if I can drive down there because I've got quite a bit of kit with me um, anyway if I can't I can't we will have to do it in shuttle runs uh, but we'll get set up um, the wind is coming head into me, it should be, so um, it should make for some slightly easier shots if we get the chance, but we will see. They are also ploughing the field behind, but I'm hopeful that that won't affect things too much. So let's get the truck positioned over there, 
get the kit out and uh, see how it goes. I'll catch you in a bit. Well, there's a lot in it. I was just driving over there. So having sat and watched and observed the pigeons for a little while it was evident they were going into the spinney and feeding roughly two thirds of the way up. So I chose a location in between a couple of pampas grass plants and some trees that still had quite a bit of um, leaf on, giving me a decent backdrop. They were ploughing in the field behind me, I was just hopeful that this wouldn't put the pigeons off feeding too much. The choice, or the kit of choice for today's session was the Hull Superfast Pigeon 29 gram cartridges along with my very trusty Winchester SX3 semi-auto 12 gauge, a fantastic gun for using in the pigeon hide. I set the pigeon magnet and rotary or spinner just off to the right and some decoys uh, spaced out to the left of those giving me a pattern in the middle or a, a kill zone in the middle where I believed the pigeons would land. Because the wind was coming into my face, the pigeons were coming over the top of the spinney and dropping into the pattern, which meant that a lot of the time I was having to shoot them uh, from behind as the pigeons were going away from me. It made for some challenging shooting, but when you did down them, they were also quite rewarding shots. As I get a screamer of a high pigeon there. With a few pigeons now on the deck, a couple of them had landed belly up and that tends to make pigeons, in my experience, flare off as they don't tend to like it. So I added these to the pattern for extra effect uh, to try and get some more pigeons coming in a little bit more convincingly. A lot of the pigeons, as you may have seen, weren't committing to landing, uh, so I thought that the increase in, in birds would help. As you can see, the hide, I think, blends in quite nicely into the background here. By lunchtime, the action had slowed up quite considerably as the man ploughing the field behind stopped and had his dinner literally right behind me there with his music blaring. Not much I could do about it, but come out, tidy up the pattern, wait for him to finish, have a bite to eat myself before the action resumed.
It's not long before packing up time now, so the keeper comes and joins me in the hide for a cup of tea and a chat while we mop up the last couple as a jackdaw and a couple of mates go over really high. I thought, oh, I can have a stab at that, I reckon. Oh my god! <laughs> Get down here, little f***ing shot! There's a piggy for me. Okay, now. Now that was a good shot, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Always good to perform in front of the boss. Uh, although you'll see just how me and Steve got on pigeon shooting in an up and coming video soon. That was pretty much about it for that day here, just with a couple of last pigeons. We finished the day picking 47 uh, pigeons altogether and the one jackdaw. So. Uh, yeah, not too bad. I was quite happy with that. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I'll be announcing the winner of the Game Fleece very soon. Plus, we don't forget we have that chance to win the original Best Fox Call Mouth Caller. Take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting.